In the case of Gypsy Rose Blanchard, by now most people understand why she did what she did. Gypsy Rose Blanchard was the victim of Munchausen by proxy, and this led to the murder of her mother, Dee Dee. But in this video, I wanna take a different angle talking about this case, and I believe it's something that all of us can learn from. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is take different topics from the news or YouTube community or TV and movies and pop culture and try to see what lessons we can learn from them to improve our own lives. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And yeah, this is something that's been on my mind, if I'm being honest, since, um, uh, I think two episodes ago of the show The Act when they introduced um, Gypsy Rose Blanchard's grandmother, which is Dee Dee's mother, and they kind of, they, they showed that situation, all right? So there's also been a lot of media attention around what happened to Gypsy Rose Blanchard's grandmother and everything like that. But basically, basically what we saw in that episode was that Dee Dee's mother, the grandmother was very verbally and emotionally abusive to Dee Dee, all right? And I've mentioned this in some other videos recently where we talk about how parents mess up children, right? So I'm not a licensed psychologist or therapist or anything like that. I, I never knew Dee Dee, I don't know Gypsy and all that, but I'm somebody who's very passionate about mental health and personal development. And what I see and what I, what I can assume and my guess is that Dee Dee developed some issues from her mother, okay? And Munchausen by proxy is an interesting, an interesting disorder. And from Dee Dee's point of view, she was doing everything out of love. And one might argue that Dee Dee didn't feel loved by her mother and what she was doing to Gypsy was an act of love. They actually did an interview with uh, Joey King, um, and they, they were talking about how this case, like, in this case, everybody was acting out of love, you know, but some people have a messed up version of love. So when Dee Dee was doing that to Gypsy Rose Blanchard, which was clearly abusive, it, it, it made Gypsy feel so helpless to a point where she thought her only way out was to murder her mother, all right? Now, what I want to talk about in this video is a larger issue, and it's about how things are passed down through generations. It's about how messed up families, it goes down through the generations, and it's something that we need to look at and break the cycle. Like, when when I talk about these cases and, you know, just looking at people who are criminals, and I have a background working at an addiction treatment center where we also specialize in mental illness, I can tell you from my personal experience, as well as my own personal experience with addiction and everything like that, most people had some kind of messed up childhood, messed up parents, things were going on in that house. And I want you to think about that as well, all right? Like, think about how many people, how many people who grew up in an environment where there was like verbal abuse, emotional abuse, maybe even physical abuse, how many of those people who grew up in that environment end up turning into an abuser? How many of them believe that that's normal because it's all they ever saw, right? And on the opposite side of that, some people don't become the abuser, but since that's what they know, like say for example, a child sees that their mother was being uh, verbally or emotionally or physically abused, that child might get into a relationship or get into a series of relationships of, you know, a man or a woman who is very abusive because in their mind, what they learn from a, a, a young age is that this is normal. This is what love looks like, all right? There is also a very, very high instance of children of alcoholics and drug addicts who then become alcoholics or drug addicts. Or on the other side of that, people who were children of alcoholics or drug addicts, they are more likely to get into a relationship with an alcoholic or drug addict when they get older. But you see this constantly with people like, uh, let's, let's look at you know, uh, sexual assault. Many, many, many people who commit sexual assault were sexually abused 
as a child. I believe that's something that came up in the Surviving R. Kelly documentary. Now, this isn't to make an excuse or anything like that, but the message I'm trying to get out there is that we need to break the cycle. We need to understand that we don't have to become our parents. Now, I, I read a very interesting book. I love reading like books about psychology and mental health and everything like that. And one of the issues is that for any of us who grew up in that kind of environment or households, we focus on, like when we become adults or on our way to become adults, we focus on, I don't wanna become my mom, I don't wanna become my dad, I don't wanna become my parents, I don't, 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 right? But what this psychologist was arguing in this book was that since our minds uh, have a negative bias and it focuses on the negative, we end up having it turning into this self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Where when we focus on what we don't want to become, that turns into what we do become. So the tip that this psychologist gave in this book, which I'll pass along to all of you, is don't focus on what you don't want to become, focus on what you do want to become. So rather than thinking, for example, rather than thinking, you know, I'm always gonna be there for my child, I'm always going to be emotionally available, I'm always gonna, you know, provide for them, I'm always gonna have a job, I'm always gonna have money, I'm always gonna have this, I'm gonna do this for them. Like, like rather than thinking it as, as like, I'm never going to yell at my kid, I'm never going to spank my child, I'm never going to fight with my child's parent in front of them, rather than saying, I'm never going to do those things, think about all the things that you will do, okay? That will help train your brain to focus on the positive aspects. But this is just something that I've always found fascinating, like ever since, I remember, I remember dating, um, dating a single mom, only single mom I ever dated, right? And I'm the child of an alcoholic mother, and she's now almost 14 years sober. I myself am almost seven years sober. And so like this girl, this woman I was dating, she grew up in a very in a very abusive household, a very, very abusive household, right? And she was a single mom. And uh, yeah, I remember one time, you know, our kids were playing or whatever, and something happened with the kids. This was like, five, maybe four or five years ago, maybe longer, I don't know. But anyway, something happened with them and we disciplined our children in different ways, right? And she had opened up to me about, you know, uh, you know what happened in her childhood. And anyway, she was telling me how I should be parenting my son, right? And I'm talking to her about it and I'm asking her, I'm like, well, why did you decide to do this with your son? And she said this to me. She said, well, that's that's what my parents always did to me, so that's the way I'm going to parent my son. And like, there was like this gigantic like record scratch, like, Arr! wait, what? And like, just think about that for a second. She's been very open, very honest, she's very self-aware that she had a messed up childhood, but her mind is telling her that she needs to raise her child the same way that her parents raised her. So you're looking at this and you're like, wait a, wait a second, wait a second. You're admitting that your childhood was messed up. Why on earth would you want to raise your son in that same way? And it's something that I have to think about as well. Like this was like a big, like we all have these aha moments in our life, right? But this was a gigantic aha moment in my life. I'm like, wow, like, am I doing this? Am I doing this? Am I am I seeking out you know relationships because this is what I was taught? Am I acting a certain way in relationships because this is what I saw? Like at what point do we pause and say, okay, wait, maybe these things weren't all that great. You know what I mean? So like when looking at what happened in uh, you know Gypsy Rose Blanchard's life, you know what happened to her mother and her grandmother. Like I would guarantee if there was like a documentary about Dee Dee's mother, you would see that Dee Dee's mother actually had that relationship, you know, a messed up uh, relationship with her parents as well. And this is something that we have to think about because we're living in a time right now where there's like this, this shift in generations, especially in the conversation around mental health, right? Like <clears throat> some of the previous generations, like what I grew up with, like my dad raised me and it was like, stuff your feelings, don't acknowledge your feelings, toughen up, do your thing, da 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 da, right? And like, was that healthy? You know, more and more we're learning as somebody who's passionate about mental health today, like I'm learning that that's not healthy. That's not good, right? And a lot of us, you know, I can speak, you know, from the perspective as a male as well, like uh, a lot of men were taught to, you know, being a man is being a certain way, right? Or some of you uh, women out there, you were taught that being a woman or being a lady is a certain way, right? At what point do we question these things that we were taught? At what point do we question these beliefs? Like, this is something I try to do all the time. When I have a fixed belief on something, I'm like, where is that belief coming from? 
Is it coming from my mom? Is it coming from my dad? Is it coming from, you know, society? Is it coming from a friend? Where is my belief coming from? Am I even acting out of my own self-will anymore? Are my thoughts even my own? Are my behaviors even my own? Or are they coming from somebody else? And this is kind of what I argued in one of my last Gypsy Rose Blanchard videos, is that she was taught to lie, cheat, and steal. Gypsy Rose Blanchard was taught these things by her mother, and that is what she knows. They are ingrained in her, and it's gonna take time for her to work through that, through therapy and psychology and all that kind of stuff. But if you're somebody, if you were watching this video and you're like, oh my God, like Chris, like pff, light bulb, right? I'm acting in a way that, you know, was, uh, you know, impressed upon me by my parents or whoever it was, like, just know like you can get better. You can start making better decisions. You can start developing your own life. You can break the cycle. If you're worried that you're doing to your children what your parents did to you, you can break that cycle. Like go out and get help. Like if you're not in therapy yet or you've never seen a psychologist, like talk to your doctor, see if they have any recommendations. Talk to your insurance company, see if they can recommend a therapist or psychologist. Another great thing to get uh, recommendations with is talking to friends who are in therapy and say, yo, can you recommend a therapist to me, right? I personally use BetterHelp Online Therapy. There's an affiliate link down below. What that means is you sign up, a little bit goes back to the channel, but I've been using BetterHelp for months now and my therapist is pretty awesome. So just know you do have the opportunity to break the cycle. You just gotta put in a little work, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to help support the channel, if you like what I'm doing here, click or tap on that Patreon icon right there. Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.